like a crazy person, I just booked a dyno like three days from now and it's not quite ready yet. So this is gonna be kind of a thrash. Um, last video you saw we got the exhaust all on, that's great. <laughs> Um, we want to get the electric fan hooked up. So I'm going to flip the camera around and show you what I bought. I got a really cool, inexpensive fan from Be Cool. Um, we're going to go ahead and install that. I think we're going to free up some horsepower there. I'm going to around right now, show you what I bought, and explain kind of why that was my only option for this car. All right, so on the table here, uh, we've got a fan from Be Cool. This was like 70 bucks, give or take, from Summit Racing. Uh, it is a small fan, so it's a good high-quality um, fan. And uh, basically the thing with this is it's really low profile. This is a pusher fan. And let me show you kind of why that's my only option. If you look in the engine bay here, there's like no room between the end of the water pump pulley, right? And, and the radiator. You couldn't fit a fan with a shroud in there. So what I'm gonna do in this video, we're gonna pull this little piece out, slide this in here, and try and go ahead and install this fan as a pusher. Um, and we're gonna wire it all up. Now, way back when I went and got an American Auto Wire harness and rewired this whole thing. So I just gotta dig in here and find out where the trigger wire is for that. Um, and I'll, I'll go over there and show you what else I got. But basically we'll have a trigger wire there. I've got a wiring harness, which I'll show you. And then I've gotta find a spot to install the temp sensor, which is a little bit tricky with a single plane because on this Edelbrock, if you look, there's not a lot of room right there. And there's not a lot of room right there. And those are the only two spots on this Victor Jr. intake. There's no other spots like on a dual plane where you've got threaded ports where you could just put you know, your sensor into. If I knew this, I could have drilled and tapped the intake when it was off the car, but that ship has sailed. Listen to the fan, so when you buy the fan, um, it comes with a fan, it comes with mounting hardware. It only comes with enough bolts to install this kind of on one side. So I will need to get other hardware to mount the other side of these kind of universal brackets, but it comes with all the stuff you see here. Um, I did go out and buy this. This is specific for Be Cool, which is the manufacturer of this fan. Comes with a nice relay and all your connections. So it's basically just plug and play. Um, and they have really good instructions what I have inside right now, um, but super happy so far with this. And then I went to Granger today and to see if like I can't do anything in line I know it's kind of funky, but I might be able to thread this maybe into my intake manifold and then have my other temp sensor right here, you know, in the new switch. So the way this works is this is a switch and I'm assuming when it gets to the preset temperature and you can buy these at different temperature ratings, this one's set for 185. So I'm pretty sure what happens is when it gets to 185 degrees, a switch inside here closes and it's a ground trigger. So it once it grounds it out, the relay, shoots power over and kicks the fan on. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Flip the camera around, put the time lapse on, go ahead and get started here. So you've got these little tabs that slide in and out like so. So you slide those in there and they're in multiple spots. So you've got some options. I just picked the ones that worked for me. There's these little rubber grommets that slide into the four holes and this spaces the fan away from the radiator and makes it so that you've got this rubber surface that it's riding on. So when you tighten it up, you're not like pushing plastic into the fins on your radiator, which is kind of nice. And then you've got these little universal brackets and they've got little square holes in them here. And these are like little carriage bolt kind of looking things with a square hole. So I think you slide those through, it'll hold it in place. You get these angled correctly. And then what my goal is gonna be is to try and use the existing um, little mounting tabs. So for the radiator, there's one, two, three, and then four down there in the bottom. Um, the only thing that I noticed is the top two have like a captured tab and I don't think that's gonna work with what I'm trying to do. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna have to replace those. The bottoms will work, but you'll have to unbolt your radiator. But overall, this shouldn't be too difficult to do. All right, I'm not in love with the solution, but if you have a Victor Junior intake, unlike a dual plane, there's not a lot of options. You basically have a three-ace NPT port on the driver's side and a half-inch 
and that's it, unless you drill and tap your manifold beforehand. So I went and picked one of these up and they're pretty cool. I'm gonna wind up probably taking it back. This is pretty sweet. Um, this would work. You can install this in like a heater hose. It's like five ace heater hose by three ace female pipe thread. That would work except the way that these need to, these switches have to work is basically you thread this in here when it reaches a certain temperature, I'm pretty sure it closes a circuit inside of here. And since this is grounded to your block, um, normally, like if you install the intake manifold or a cylinder head, it grounds it out. If you install it in here, you just got a rubber hose on each side, it's not gonna create a ground. So you gotta do something like this. So in my case, I'm gonna actually install this plus another set of fittings. It's kind of janky, I don't love it. Um, they do make stuff like this that has a ground hook to it already. Um, I just, for the heck of it, tried to see if I could like solder on this. You can't. You could probably drill and tap something um, to have a ground, but then you've also got a point for it to leak and there's not a lot of meat. So it's like, unless you had a really tiny, like, you know, bottoming tap, I don't know. It's a cool idea, but I don't think it's gonna work. So we're gonna go ahead and try this. All right, we got the fan fully mounted. Rock solid on there, really happy with the way that came out. Extra room in here is gonna be nice. You can see here, I try to tuck this away as nice as possible. And really, honestly, if you look down from the top, it only looks like there's one sensor in there, but there's two. So I'm hoping it doesn't leak because if this leaks, uh, I'm gonna take it all back out apart. I would definitely recommend doing this without the distributor in. I did it with the distributor in, but it is a tight fit. Um, however, uh, now that you know everything's timed correctly, I should be able to still rotate the distributor and adjust the timing even with the way it is. But I need to find my trigger wire and basically everything's hooked up. It's just plug and play at this point with the harness. This is why you plan ahead. This is awesome. I knew at some point I'd probably have an electric fan. So when I installed the American Auto Wire harness, even though I didn't have an electric fan, you know, yet I still ran the wire all the way down, terminated right here. So now I just fished it out. All my other wiring stays intact. And I've got my trigger wire right here for my electric fan. All right, let's talk wiring. Um, this Be Cool wiring kit comes with like a little pamphlet. It's really cool. It's like one book that shows you how to wire all the different options, which is really nice. And it shows you like accessory add-ons, whether you've got single fan, dual fan, AC, no AC, switch, whatever. So um, this kit is the 75032 for a singular fan. I know some of you guys don't like wiring. Feel free to hit pause here at the video or like take a screenshot if you wanna look at this. But I'm gonna hopefully dispel any kind of concerns you may have about wiring, how easy this is. Okay, first of all, green wire, okay? This green wire is your switch from an ignition source, meaning with the relay, you need to have power to it but this is not like, like what's drawing all of your power to run the fan. This is just to power the relay. So this is just a switch 12 volt ignition source. Um, you can get this from your fuse box when you turn your key on and you got power, turn off, it turns off. So that's where this is coming from. Um, your big wire right here should be pretty obvious. Your big orange wire over here on the diagram that goes up to your battery. Um, this goes to your battery. So you hook this to the positive terminal on your battery and there's a little connector for a 30 amp fuse. So that's easy. Then you have your connection, which is pretty obvious, black and red. This goes right to your fan. They give you another connector here if you wanna do some of this. This just plugs straight into your fan, okay? And the black wire, if you trace that back, the black wire just got like a little ring terminal on it. Um, this is a ground. This doesn't have to go to your battery. Um, this can go to a chassis ground, wherever. Just make sure it's a good ground. Um, you don't really need to run this back to your battery at all. Just make sure it's a good solid ground. And then your last wire here, this gray wire, um, is your switch. So this would go to wherever you installed your um, temperature switch to kick on the whole system. I, I would imagine if I wired all this up and I took that, that gray wire and I touched the ground, I would almost guarantee that the fan comes on. You could probably also hook up a switch to that, but to me, a switch is fine, but then you gotta remember to turn it on. It's much better to install something like this so you know when the coolant temp hits the desired temperature, it just kicks on. So 
We'll throw the time lapse on, go ahead and get this thing installed. You might see me doing some cutting here just because I want to make the harness shorter. You don't have to do that. You can coil up the wires, but um, where I'm going to mount this, I'm probably going to make everything shorter. So you'll see me cutting some wires and redoing some connections, but you don't have to do that. I can't make this up. Tomorrow, dyno, got to be there. Put the camera up, do all the wiring. Do I hit the time lapse button? No, I actually made a video the whole hour and so of me doing that. So that's trash. You can't see the time lapse, sorry. But this is even funnier. Fan works great. As I'm tightening up the battery terminal, the last step, let me flip the camera around and show you what just happened. I cannot believe this happened. Literally, I get all the wiring done. I get it tucked away in the loom as best I can. I run all the stuff over to here, fuse. And then look at this, look at this. The stupid battery terminal cracks. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's literally completely cracked for me tightening it up. Now I gotta put a new battery terminal on this thing. All right, I'm so oddly excited about this part, it's not even funny. My air cleaner, because the HEI just hits, hits the uh, distributor, just the way these things are. But I found these lids that are offset and if it works, holy smokes, it will. It's gonna set everything backwards. So I've got clearance and I got this sweet new red filter because I couldn't help myself. So let's see how this works out. All right, I'm, not, I'm sorry. Is that not the coolest thing you've ever seen right there? Come on now. That thing, if we can get this damn just got to tighten on. Get out of here. This thing is sweet. You kidding me? Heck yeah. Looks so much better. All right. Sorry for that brief excursion with the uh, air cleaner there. I was just, <laughs> honestly, I needed to take a break for a second, but I'll flip the camera around and show you what I did. I fixed the terminal, took the thing out for a drive. It works perfectly. Um, let me show you the terminal real quick. All right, so I went to the auto parts store, went and snagged one of these style terminals. I actually like these a lot better. And uh, it is all hooked up. The fan is all working great. And took it out for a drive, it kicks on. I had to add some coolant back in because I had to drain some coolant out when I went and installed uh, my little port there for the temperature switch. But went out and drove it after putting coolant in it and it runs perfectly. Now it is a little bit later in the season here in Utah, so um, the real test will be next summer, um, but for right now, it is ready for the dyno. The really cool thing about these fans is that when you pull off a mechanical fan like I had with like no clutch on it, um, Engine Masters did a video with the 305 Chevy, so very similar to this, and between an electric fan and a clutchless mechanical fan, they saw 30 horsepower loss across the board. Now, granted, that's on a chassis dyno, or I'm sorry, that's on an engine dyno, and this is gonna be on a chassis dyno tomorrow, but for the cost of that harness and the fan, if you can pick up 20 wheel horsepower, that's like massive. So I definitely think that's worth it. It's honestly running cooler now. Um, but in this next video, we're gonna be back to the dyno. And just in case you guys don't know, the real big thing we're trying to do with this car is to try and see if we can match the power to weight um, of like a new Mustang with an old 302 on a budget. So this, this Comet or your Falcon, these are light cars. This thing, um, well, actually I just re-weighed re it. Uh, it's under 2,900 pounds. It's 2,860 with like three quarters of a tank of gas, um, which is pretty freaking sweet. So tomorrow we got to make like over 320 wheel horsepower. And this thing initially only made 170 before I did the top end kit, the cam, the intake, all that stuff. So kind of threw the whole book at it with like all the little like speed tips I could come up with. And this electric fan was the last one. So really excited for tomorrow. Um, this is gonna wrap up the video for today, but go back and watch the old videos. And if you have any questions with the electric fan install, just let me know. Um, I had another video where I did a dual electric fan on a big block Chevy. And uh, I thought that was a pretty cool video. And it, you know, it's got like a hundred and some thousand views or almost, almost there right now. So I'm hoping that you guys will also find this video useful as well. Um, I think a lot of people got some good information from that last video, but I love electric fans. Um, they worked, have worked well for me. And the other great thing is when you're trying to time this thing, you don't have to worry about 
cutting your finger on you know, the fan or if you don't have a fan shroud or all that stuff, it just solves all those problems. So couldn't be more happy with this Be Cool fan and the wiring kit. Can't wait to get on the dyno tomorrow. Check out that video, but thanks for watching and see you guys next time on Truck and Roll.